to Mr. Casey Anani, resident coordinator, United Nations, Liberia, for the UN reading of the UN Day message of the Secretary General. Madam Clamari Weir, Mother of the Nation, the Dean, and members of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the Cabinet here present, our ECOWAS family, Mr. Kinsley Amandi, and all the members of the United Nations family, government officials, former government officials here present, special invitees, members of the 4th Estate, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, it is my honor to invite to the podium the President of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency Dr. George Maivia, who will now come and make a Madam Clara Maribuya, First Lady of the Republic of Liberia, members of the House of Representatives, members of the Liberian Senate, the Dawn the members of the Diplomatic Corps, the Acting Dean and members of the Cabinet, bishops, prelates, and members of the clergy, other officials of government, heads and members of the political parties here present, the resident coordinator of the United Nations in Liberia, local and international development partners, political and business leaders, Distinguished personalities, members of the Fourth Estate, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad to be here today to participate on this special occasion, marking the observance of the remarkable milestone that you and us achieved. It bears testament to the foresight of its vision bearer to maintain international peace and security, develop friendly relations, and be a center for harmonizing the actions of nations adapted on the 25th June and formally enacted on 24th October 1945. As we celebrate in advance, the 75th year of UN existence, Liberia, one of the 50 countries that signed the charter in San Francisco, is proud to be a success story of what the UN stands for. We can proudly say the world is safer today and more prosperous because of the UN. However, some of the main focus of this August body must be realigned to current day realities. Countries and peoples have involved. The world has changed and we must adjust to continue to achieve the objectives of the San Francisco Charter. Over the decades, 
of its existence, the UN has scored remarkable progress around the world, particularly on the peace and security pillar. Its peacekeeping missions, including the OME, for example, has brought about law and order from intractable conflict situations. It remains the beacon of fundamental human rights for all, including freedom of speech, gender equality, and women's empowerment. In addition, the body has helped and continues to lead during health emergencies. With the UN assistant, Liberia combated Ebola and is now withstanding COVID-19, a deadly disease that is not going away. The COVID-19 has immensely overwhelmed healthcare systems around the world, including those of developed nations. Its attendant economic crisis continues to have adverse impact on many nations around the world. Ours has been no exception but working with our various partners, including the UN, we have seemingly been spared some of the most negative effects of the crisis so far. While the pandemic lingers, we have experienced and continue to see different acts of violence and civil unrest in our sub-region. Let us remember that the real enemy is COVID-19 and not ourselves and our people. Let's refrain from violence and embrace peace because it is only true peace and stability development for our people and countries are possible. My government remains committed to the UN in securing war peace and upholding business human rights for all. Finally, I would like to take this time to thank Dr. Kinsley Opoku, a morning resident coordinator and staff for a great working relationship between the UN and the government of Liberia. In our various discussion over the implementation of the proper agenda for prosperity and development, there has been a common understanding that my government and the United Nations will work more with their communities across the counties. I would therefore like to see a greater and stronger United Nations presence at the community level to enable the body tailor solutions that will benefit the people. In closing, I would like to again Thank the UN for its tremendous collaboration with the government of Liberia in finding solutions for the advancement of lives and livelihoods of our people. I say once again congratulations to my former colleagues and my partner in progress. I thank you.
special message uh, a special message from the president of the republic of Bahia, his excellency george mana we are on the 75th united nation day as you all know the un has played a significant role in keeping the peace of liberia so So yeah, great in the occasion. Yeah. You got the Minister of State who have portfolio, Chokon Kui, very young and energetic young man that is contributing a lot to the proper agenda. Very young. Uh, you see, this is the benefit of Joshua giving power to the people. <laughs> Sir Richard Clinton, how are you? How are you doing? I hope you're doing wonderful. Just a few announcements. Uh, members of the Diplomatic Corps will move into the RC conference room on the ground floor for light refreshment. Heads of agencies, deputies will move up to the Kofi Annan floor on the third floor. The Diplomatic Corps can now come for the photo, and after that, you can move to the RC conference room for light refreshment. Heads of UN agencies as well you can also come for the, the photo with the, with the president. When it's time we have...